So today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be making another epic Star Wars diorama. But first, I had to ask you one question. Have you seen this concept art? No? Yes? Maybe? Well, today we are going to be recreating that concept art in real life. This is an image of the Ewing ship. This played a pivotal role in the Star Wars Rogue One film, belonging to the one and only Cassian Andor. One of my now favourite Star Wars characters after Andor, so strap your space belts in as we build his very own ship. This is the Ewing Starfighter and support craft, and in this story it has faced catastrophic electronic damage, forcing an emergency landing in the barren wasteland. Two soldiers are forced to try and reconnect to the Rebel Alliance, but there are nothing but whispers and ghosts on the radio. Now oh, I must say, this is a pretty fun kit to build, and man, I, I can't tell you I love making Star Wars stuff so much. I think I might have to make some Star Wars Clone Wars diorama next, I cannot contain it. But yeah, making this kit was so much fun, most of us push fit, meaning just click and clack it all together, but I like to add a bit of glue for that nice bit of stability. So with the U-Wing now complete, it's time to give it a nice shiny coat of paint. For this, I am priming it black and giving it a Xenophil highlight with some white paint on top. And of course, with my luck, my studio lamp broke, so I had to quickly hot glue my finger to the light as well. But that swiftly moves us on to making the Star Wars diorama. I know I wanted an emergency landed or crash ship, so I outlined the U-Wing onto some nice XPS foam. <laughs> now it was the painstakingly long task to slowly make a hole for it to fit into, using these little clippers. With that out of the way, it's painting time. The time where we paint the U-Wing to look exactly the same, but hopefully it will look a bit nicer by the end. So for this I painted a warm grey all over the ship and proceeded to airbrush an extremely light grey on top. I also marked the areas orange that I wanted to paint orange. And of course, some handy tape to keep my line straight. Now for most of this I chose really highly saturated paints, as I'll be using some enamel washes later on, which will hopefully dull everything back down. And this orange looks so nice, if it only didn't need 5 coats to put on, I'd use it for everything. Now we can also add some accent colours to see if this tape really works. And... all but one, but I'll take that any day. Now the main thing that's left is the engines, and for this I wanted a more dark look, so I painted all the rims black and then painted everything in the warm greys and whites. So for a nice distressed battle look like the ships just crash landed on this space moon planet, I grabbed a bit of sponge and dipped it in some light grey and tapped it on all of the bright colours for some nice chipping. If you did want to take this a step further, you can add a dark colour in the middle of the chips to make it look more 3D and textured. And there we have it! The bulk of the ship is painted, which leads us to my favourite part, enamels. For the main enamels, we are going to be using a dark black wash and we're going to be coating this whole ship in it, literally every nook and cranny. And if you're really enjoying this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and if you really are enjoying it, consider becoming a member by clicking that join button down below, or becoming a patron. Links will be in the comments and description. Thank you so much. Dankeschön. When it came to removing the wash, I quickly realised a cotton wool bud's not going to cut it. So it's time to glove up. For this, I used a nitrile glove underneath, 
with an old cotton glove on top. This will allow me to not get solvents all over my hand, but the added benefit of some cotton. I then soaked them in solvent and gave this beautiful Ewing a nice massage. This actually worked so much better than I thought it would, and flip me, some off the spot thinking really paid off here. Once the black wash was done and dry, I added some dark mud on top for some more grit and dankness. I then repeated all the same steps as before, but only painting this on the front and sides of the ship as this is kind of resembles that mud that's kicked off when it landed. So that's it for the ship. It's pretty much painted now, which leads us to finally making this Star Wars diorama. Now one of the most important things when making a diorama is making a nice variation in height. And I kind of screwed myself over on this bit. I kind of just put this on a nice block of flat foam. So I tried my best to add some height and variety to it and lowered some of the sides. And using this clay is a godsend as it sticks to literally anything, and it's so easy to use. We'll be covering the whole diorama in this to make a nice moon-like texture. So next, I covered the whole thing in some watered down PVA and sand. This will be the nice start for our rock texture. I also poured some isopropyl alcohol on it, which will get rid of any surface tension, making it much easier to build up sand layers, and especially helped when adding these little rocks. Once it was dry, I gave it a xenophil highlight and sprayed a nice greyish blue to resemble that nice random Star Wars planets you see. Usually they're always like black sand because they're filmed in Iceland. But this is Space Iceland. All that's left to do is glue these little men that I painted off camera. And while looking back, there's a lot more I wish I did to this diorama. I wish I actually buried the ship. But for now, it's done. I really hope you enjoyed this diorama. Make sure to like and subscribe to help me out. And I'll catch you in the next one.